Hello, friends. Today, I'd like to read you from Razel's Riddle. It's the stories by Erica Silverman and pictures by Susan Gaber. Friends, this story reminds me of another story. See if it reminds you of another story as we read it. Razel's Riddle. Once upon a time, in a village in Poland, there lived an orphan girl named Razel. She was raised by her grandfather, a poor scholar. That's someone who studies uh, and is very learned. A poor scholar who studied day and night. Because of his vast learning, the villagers turned to him for wisdom and guidance. They paid him when they could with cheese or bread or wood for the fire. In this way, Razel and her grandfather got by. To hear people are bringing things for them as he's offering his advice. One day, Razel said, sat by her grandfather's side, watching as he poured over a thick book. Zeta, she asked. That's what she called her grandfather. Zeta, why do you study all the time? Why, indeed, he looked at her with twinkling eyes. It is written that learning is more precious than rubies, more lasting than gold. Rubies may be lost and gold stolen, but that which you learn is yours forever. Zeta, said Razel, I want to study too. Razel's grandfather began to teach her. Every day they read and recited from ancient texts, often late into the night. Then came a harsh winter. Razel's grandfather fell ill. One bitter cold night as she sat reading to him, he breathed his last breath. The villagers visited Razel with words of comfort. They brought what little food they could spare. But Razel did not want to become a burden to them. As the snow began to melt, she set out to seek work. Wearing a tattered shawl, she followed a dirt path through the forest and field until at last she reached the gates of the city. She made her way through the crooked, narrow streets. She stopped at every house to ask for work. Again and again, she was turned away. Oh, that must be very tough. Hmm. Beyond the synagogue, Razel entered a courtyard and knocked on the door. A woman in the apron opened it. The poor house is down the street, said the woman, Jack, gruffly. I am seeking work, Razel explained. I can cook and clean. The woman turned up her nose. This is a fine home of the most distinguished rabbi. I am his cook, the best in all of Poland, and I manage the household too. At that moment, the rabbi came to the door. Please, Razel begged, I am strong and capable. For a place to sleep and some bread, I will work very hard. The rabbi turned to the cook. Surely you could use some help. Hmm. Scowling, the cook led Razel to the kitchen. You might be capable, rag girl, but that doesn't mean you can push your way into my home and steal my job. She pointed to the large wash tub. Fill it to the top and be quick. Razel hurried back and forth, hauling bucket after bucket from the well to the wash tub, and finally it was full. Not fast enough, the cook kicked it over. Do it again. Oof. Later that night, the cook showed Razel to a bed of straw behind the oven. Early the next morning, she took Razel from, she shook Razel from her sleep. Scrub the hearth until it sparkles, she ordered. And so the days passed from sun up to sundown. Razel held her tongue, which means she didn't say anything, hid her tears, and did as she was told. Looks like the cook is watching something happening out in the courtyard. As the holiday of Purim drew near, Friends, that is a festival where people dress up and in costumes and celebrate um, 
they're it's, it's another very festive Jewish holiday. As Purim drew near, Razel worked harder than ever. There were costumes to make ready and a feast to prepare. On Purim morning, Razel walked across the courtyard, struggling with a heavy bundle of wood. She bumped into someone. Logs fell, and quickly she bent down to pick them up. I'm so sorry, said a kind voice. Silly of me to read and walk at the same time. Razel looked up. It was the rabbi's son. He helped gather the wood and carried it into the kitchen. Then he walked on, his nose back in his book. The cook eyes blazed. I saw you talking to the rabbi's son, hoping to weasel your way into his family's good graces. From now on, keep to yourself or things will go badly for you. That afternoon, guests dressed in their Purim costumes sat down to a fine feast of beet soup, roast duck, potato pancakes, and noodle pudding. Razel cleared the table, listening to the young woman entertain the rabbi's son with riddles. A clock, said the rabbi's son. Oh, what is it? What, what has a face but no mouth, asked, asked one. A clock, said the rabbi's son. I have a good riddle, said another. Razel lingered, waiting to hear more. The rabbi's son saw her. Do you have a riddle too, he smiled. The cook pushed Razel into the kitchen. If you cannot stay out of sight, she warned, I will lock you up in the pantry. After dinner, the rabbi and his guests climbed to horse-drawn wagons and rode to off to see a Purim play. Razel sighed, I wish what it, I wish I could go too. In your costume of rags, the cook sneered, take your dinner from what is left over, then go get to work. She pointed to the piles of plates and pots and pans waiting to be washed. Razel carried her paltry meat outside and sat by the well. An old beggar woman hobbled towards her. I can see you are hungry, Razel said. She offered the woman her own plate of food. The woman ate. Because of, then, then she reached for Razel's hands. Because of your kind heart, I grant you three wishes, she leaned closer. But know this, magic does not last past midnight. Magic? Was it possible? Could she go to the poor and play? Razel shut her eyes. I wish for a Purim costume. <sighs> Suddenly, she felt different. Opening her eyes, she gasped. I am dressed as Queen Esther. That is a, a famous character from the Purim story. I am dressed as Queen Esther. She twirled around and round. Again, her eyes shut. I wish for a horse-drawn wagon. A wagon stood waiting. Trembling with excitement, she climbed on. Razel entered the hall. Everyone's eyes turned towards her. What a beautiful costume, whispered one person. I wonder who she is, whispered another. After the porn play, a klezmer band made music. The rabbi's son came up to Razel and introduced himself. Forgive my boldness, he said, but in that costume, you are the loveliest Queen Esther here. It is a pity there are no other prizes tonight. Well, that's a very nice compliment about the costume. I wonder what else they have to say to each other. Razel blushed. It's only a costume. As it is written, look not at the flask, but what it contains. That means don't look at the vessel, but what's inside of it. The rabbi's son stared in surprise. How is it that you know words of Talmud? Friends, words of Talmud is a, are, are words of ancient books of wisdom um, for the Jewish people. How is it that you know world, world's, uh, words of Talmud? Razel's eyes grew moist. My Zeta, blessed be his memory, was a dev was My Zeta, blessed be his memory, was a devout scholar. Have I heard of him? asked the rabbi's son. It is not likely, replied Wazel. He lived in a small village far from here. And where do you live? Razel was silent. He did not realize that she was only the rag girl in his kitchen. Quickly, she changed the subject. May I tell you a riddle? Before he could reply, she made one up. What is more precious than rubies, more lasting than gold? What can never be traded, stolen, or sold? What comes with great effort and takes time, but then, once yours, will we'll serve you again and again. Hmm. 
All at once, a clock began to chime. Midnight. Bong, bong. I must go, Razel raced across the hall. Wait, called the rabbi's son. Bong, bong. She ran through the doors. Bong, climbed into the wagon. Bong, she grabbed the reins. The horse took off. Bong, bong. The wagon clattered down Cobblestone Street. Bong, bong. At last, it stopped at the rabbi's house. Here she is. There we go. That's the page. Look, she's coming home to such a mess to clean. Razel hurried to the kitchen. Bong! Oh no, the dishes! She closed her eyes. I wish the kitchen spotless. Bong! The kitchen was clean, and Razel was back in her old rags. Sadly, she curled up on her bed of straw. She hardly slept, thinking of her conversation with the rabbi's son. The next morning, as Razel was working in the kitchen, she heard voices outside. Are we having company? She asked the cook. We indeed. I warned you to keep to yourself. The cook pushed Razel into the pantry and barred the door. It was dark, but for one ray of light. Razel climbed on a stool and followed the lights to, uh, to a hole in the door. Peering through it, she could see all the way to the dining room where guests had gathered. Welcome, friends, and thank you for coming, the rabbi said. Last night, a girl told my son a riddle that showed rare intelligence. This is the girl my son wants to marry. She must be found. And here people are gathered to hear what the riddle was. You see the rabbi and the son and the cook and other people around. I told him a wonderful riddle, said a woman in a fancy hat. Can you hear my rhyme? No, what is that over my head under my hat? The rabbi's son shook his head. The answer is a hair, he said. But that is not the right riddle. More women came forward. The rabbi's son listened to one riddle after another. Finally, he sighed. These riddles are common. The one I seek spoke of something precious and lasting. Razel's heart fluttered. Could it be hers? She banged on the door with all her might. The rabbi's son hurried to the kitchen. What was that noise? The cook shrugged. Just the rag girl. She's cleaning the pantry. My name is Razel. I too told you a riddle, called Razel through the door. The cook scoffed. She was here all night washing dishes. I would hear the riddle, said the rabbi's son. He unbarred the door. Razel stepped forward. What's more precious than rubies, more lasting than gold? What can never be traded, stolen, or sold? That's it, cried the rabbi's son. He completed the riddle. What comes with great effort and takes time, but then once yours will serve you again and again. He took her hand. Will you marry me? Only if you can answer my riddle, she replied. He smiled. The answer is learning. Yes, said Razel. Yes. And so Razel and the rabbi's son were married. They lived and learned happily ever after. Friends, does that remind you of another story that you may have learned? It sort of reminds me of Cinderella, doesn't it? But what I love about this is that what, what's on offer here is not a glass slipper, but learning. Learning is so precious, and it really can never be taken away from you once you learn it. More precious than rubies. Friends, I hope you learned many things today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take good care of yourself, and go do something good.